of God in the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. We are winding up a message today. I've been preaching the entire month of October about the importance of the house of God. We started with a temple that Moses built in the desert. We went to the temple that Solomon built on Mount Moriah. We talked little about the temple of, uh, uh, temple of uh, um, um, Zerubbabel. Nehemiah, Nehemiah uh, Haggai, Haggai, and others. We are winding up in the New Testament. How New Testament people treated the house of God. When the devil wanted to tempt Jesus, the Bible said in Matthew chapter chapter number 4 that he took him on the pinnacle of the temple. Even the devil knows the importance of the temple. That's why he took Jesus. That's where he took Jesus. And uh, let's say, see Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 5 as we wind up today. Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 5. Then the devil took him up in the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Verse number 6. And says unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give you angels' charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash thy foot against stone. Even the devil understands in verse number five the importance of the house of God. He thought that the only way he could embarrass Jesus was to tempt him right on the pinnacle of the temple. Never allow the devil to weaken and tempt you in the house of God. Jesus said in verse number Seven. In verse number seven, said Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. When we come in the house of God, let us not tempt others, especially young ladies who dress very badly. Your breast is out, your bums peeping. Your thighs naked. You are the devils yourselves. You are like the devil taking Jesus at the pinnacle of the temple. You come and tempt our young men. And sometimes you even tempt pastors. We have seen many pastors falling in the sin of fornication. Because we allow temptation in the house of God. Ladies and gentlemen, let us honor and respect the house of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 1, we see another reference about the temple. 
Ndaba Njau Ndamu ye kalu ya katona As I said we are winding up today So I'm trying to read, read a, new, a number of scriptures As we finish And Jesus went out and departed from the temple And his disciples came to him To show him the buildings of the temple You know he was in the temple when he got out. The disciples and other people came to show him the buildings of the temple. The temple in the Bible was very, very interesting that even Jesus had to be shown it. So when he departed from the temple His disciples came to him To show him the buildings of the temple If you think a temple is not a building I pity you Some people say the temple is me The temple is a human being What you're speaking is correct there is a building called a temple uh, and Jesus went out of the temple and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple verse number 2 verse number 2 Jesus said unto yes, him, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon the other that shall not be thrown down. We are talking about a temple built by stones. Not temples built by flesh. Like me. When the government was shutting down, he did not shut the temple of me. He shut that temple built of stones. That temple is very, very important. We need to understand the the importance of the house of the Lord. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 15. Today we are merely reading scriptures about temple. Matthew 23 15. Jesus spoke to the Matthews and said to Matthew 23 and verse 15. Verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more a child of hell than yourself. Let's go very quickly. Woe unto you, you blind guys, which say whosoever shall swear by the temple is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the God of the temple is a debtor. You are not even supposed to swear the temple. To take it to swear the temple. If you swear by the temple, woe unto you. You can swear by the parliament. You can swear by the airport. You can swear by the White House. You can swear by military barracks. You can swear by a shopping arcade. But you cannot swear by the temple. You cannot. The temple is a designated place. You are not even supposed to swear by it. The moment you say that temple is nothing, woe unto you. Anybody who said that temple is nothing, woe unto you. May I say it again? Anyone. Regardless of the color, regardless of your size, regardless of your nationality, regardless of your position, if you say that temple is nothing, woe unto you. These words are coming from the mouth of Jesus. He respects the temple. You are not even supposed to swear by it. <laughs> uh -huh. Verse number 17. You fools and blind. For whoever is the greater, the God of the temple that sanctifies the gold. He's going to show us even gold is incomparable to the temple because it is the temple that sanctifies the gold. He's talking about money. 
It is the temple that sanctifies the money. Not the money sanctifies the temple. Pastors, ministers, oh, I want to warn you. Do not come to the temple to cheat the congregation. Do not preach for the sake of earning money. Do not speak to the people the word of God to corn the children of God. You are going to be in two categories. Number one, boy unto you. And number two, you are full by Jesus. Number three, you are blind. The temple is more important than money. Yes. The temple is more important than gold. So do not cheat people using the message of the gospel in the temple. Do not bring your false prophecies. Calling people because you're a preacher, because you're an apostle, because you're a pastor, because you're a minister. The temple is more important than gold. You fools and blind. Whether is greater. The gold, all the temple that sanctifies the gold. Which is greater? The offering of the temple that sanctifies the offering. Which is greater? So let us love the temple more than money. Let us love the temple more than gold. Let us love the temple more than the offerings and tithes. Let us love the temple more than the seeds. Because which is greater? The gold. Zab. All the temple that sanctifies the gold. If you choose the money to be more important than the, the temple, you are fool, you are blind, and why unto you? Temple is very important. Verse number 18. And so ever shall swear by the altar. And he said it is nothing. But whosoever shall, shall swear by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. You know, even the altar, you cannot swear by it. You cannot swear by this. This is a podium. It is a podium. It is seated on the altar. Come on, bring your camera very quickly. The altar is from the white pillar. Where you see the white pillar. The altar goes the way on this red carpet. Via the the screen. It goes all the way. Up to the other pillar. And goes back to the wall. All this is the altar. And this is the podium. And this is the offering baskets. And there are many other offering baskets here. I want you to see the importance of the house of God. The Bible says, whosoever shall swear by the altar and say it is nothing, is also fool, blind, and woe unto you. God respects the and even the altar is inclusive. So the gifts we bring, they are not very important. Because God can be there without the gift. We are not even supposed to swear by the temple, by, by, by the altar. Verse number 19, because of time. You fools and blind. For weather is greater. The gift, all the altar that sanctifies the gift. These gifts that you bring, what is more important? The offerings, 
All the altar that sanctifies the because the the priest stands here and say to everyone that has an offering get hold of them and everyone gets an envelope some people say lift up your envelope and you'll raise it up and the priest stands on the pulpit and begins to pray Lord whoever is holding a tithe and an offering and whoever is holding a seed bless them press it shake it make it overflow let men bring into our bosom them holding tithes may you open the windows of heaven in Jesus' name Amen and then he will tell you Move and bring. Uh, you begin to walk and bring. And Jesus asked, You fools and blind, which is greater? The gift you have brought, or the altar that sanctified before you brought it? The temple of God is very important. Because in the temple of God, there abideth also the altar. Verse number 20. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. Mm. The covenant covenant the house of God is very important. Finally, verse 21. Because of the truth of the truth. And so, so shall swear by the temple. Swear is by it. And by him that dwells therein. Yes. Once you swear by the temple. You are swearing that. No. And that one. Him. By him. No, mm, you. That dwelleth there. Ajiveram. Yani. Ye katonda mwenyini. Bola yira temple. Bola yide katonda. When you swear by the temple, you have sworn by God. Bino bietuala yira angeda. Masi maga katonda. Okufira mkitoke chavonya. Eh, dying in the banana plant. Oh, wola yide chitoke. That you have sworn by the banana plants. That is okay. But when you swear by the temple, you have sworn by the temple itself and by him that dwelleth in it. It shows you that the Lord dwells in his temple. You cannot compare the temple with anything else. And when the churches were closed, they enclosed the church and the God that dwells in it. Born again returned to churches because the president opened them. They were opened on September 20th. Many have not seen them coming back to church. Not only here, even in other churches. Many people have not yet returned to the church. Born again returned to the church. Christians returned to churches. Ministers returned to the church. The house of the Lord is very important. We don't need even to swear by it. 
not even its altar not even by the things on the altar not even by the gift that you have put on the altar the house of our Lord is very great born against love the house of the Lord whenever you get time to go to the house of the Lord speak like David that I was glad when they told me that we are going in the oh, house of the Lord oh hallelujah amen two more scripture for today Luke chapter 19 Luke chapter 19 and verse 47 Luke 19 and verse 47 Luke 19 and verse 47 1947 and when they saw it 1947 1947 over Tell you Luke 1947 okay look to get them look eh? okay and he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. He taught daily You people come on in church on Sundays. Where do you get them? you who attend church on Sunday you come in the temple on Sunday where do you get it from the Catholics with the things you go to church on Sunday where do you get it from the seventh days what of that business of going to church on Saturday where do you get it from the Anglicans praying on Sunday where do you get it from even you born again coming to church on Sunday where do you get them from Onapata hii wandiko kutoka wapi? Mubi jawa iche chawa ndikuwa mchi jawa. Wapi? Mchi jawa. Bibiri ya gani hiyo? Bibiri ya we yo. <laughs> Nino mbunu zima na hake. <laughs> Jesus taught daily in the temple. Yesu na igirizabu liru nako muye karu. That's what I'm doing. Echo chienkola. On Sunday I'm here five times. Kusande mbira ni minu ndiye tan. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every evening 6 p.m. Uliru nako wakufa kumande mpaka kusande sawa kumina bidi. 6 p.m. to 7.30. Sawa kumina bidi pake mchitundi. Why? Luaji. Because Jesus taught daily in the temple. Kubanga yesu ya yigiri zanga buliru naku muye karu. In the temple every day. Buliru naku muye karu. We must be in the house of God every day. Tulino kubera mnyumba ya katonda buliru naku. We must be in the temple of God every day. Tulino kubera muye karu ya mkama buliru naku. We must come to church every day. Tulino kujamu kanisa buliru naku. We must attend services every day. Tulino kubera mu service buliru naku. We must take care of the house of God every day. Tulino kulabiri nyumba ya katonda buliru naku. And he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes and the, and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. The devil always doesn't always want people to worship God in the temple every day. That's why, that's why many of you come on on Sunday. But Jesus is expecting you to be in the temple every day. As a matter of fact, you need to give Jesus a tenth of your time every day. Two hours and forty minutes. From forty. Yes, because the day is twenty-four hours. Two hours and forty minutes. That is go to God every day. 
That time should go to God every day. And you are remaining with the 21 hours and 20 minutes. Use them to do whatever you want to do. Come to the house of God every day as Jesus does. Matthew 26 and verse 55. I'm about to finish the scriptures because we are winding up today. Matthew 26. In the same hour, Jesus said to the multitude, Are you come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple. And you laid no hand on me. I sat with you daily in the temple. You think that the temple is for Sunday. You just annoy God. If the son of God that has no sin that did not commit any sin that doesn't have any crime he has said I sat with you teaching in the I sat Daily with you. Teaching in the temple. Daily. That's what I'm doing here at Entebbe Miracle Center Cathedral. I am teaching you daily. Now I am on lunch hour live. Daily. I am coming in the evening revival. Daily. And I'm coming back on Sunday. Daily Sunday. Because Jesus sat daily with them teaching in the temple. Love the house of God. You people you can annoy. You go and work every day. You brush your teeth every day. You wash every day. You go to the toilet every day. You make calls every day. You take breakfast every day. You eat lunch every day. But listen. You don't want to come to the temple every day. I have told you. Last scripture. Luke chapter 21 and verse 37. Luke 21, 37. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. At night, he went out and abode in the mountain that called the mountain of olives. Verse 38. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. All the people all the people all the members of Entebbe Miracle Center Church you are supposed to come to the temple every day to hear what Jesus has to tell you. Abantu mwenna abasabira mwentebe miracle center mulino kujanga mukanisa mulinaku mulire Yesu chayagalo bagamba. You tune on on UBC every day. Ne mutega UBC buli runaku and you hear what people are saying there. Ne muliriza abantu byabogero ko. You tune on NTV akaungezi. Ne muteka ke NTV akaungezi. And you hear what Farida Nakazwe has to tell ne you. Ne muliya Nakazwe Farida chabagamba. You tune on NBS. Ne muteka ke ni BS. And you hear what Amasenge has to tell you. Then you put an agatari konfufu. And you hear what they say. They but you cannot come to hear what Jesus has to tell you. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple so to hear him. 
all the people not only ministers not only ushers not only security not only praise and worship not only musicians not only technical people but all the people came early in the morning Go back to verse number 37. And I'll show you the importance of this. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. Daytime. Lunch hour. As you see me now. He was teaching in the temple. Jesus. Yes. At night, he went out and abode in the mountain. That's called the mountain of olives. Going to the mountain to pray. During day, he's preaching in the temple. He goes for lunch. From lunch, he goes to the mountain and pray. Through the night. Then verse number 38. Through the night is there. And all the people come early in the morning. So in the morning, he comes back to the temple and all the people come early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. What did God tell him when he was praying at night? Do you know what the Lord told me when I was praying at night? I tell it to you in church. The vision that the Lord gave to me I tell it to you in church. The dream that the Lord gave to me I tell it to you in church. The vision that the Lord gave to me I'll tell it to you in church. The plan that the Lord gave to me I tell it to you in church. The direction that the Lord gave to me I tell it to you in church. You must come to church that you may hear what the Lord told me and that I may tell it to you. That's what the Bible says. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple not in TV, TV. not in radio, radio. Local, the TV church. born again you've made TV a church TV is not a church Television is sick, kanisa. radio is not a church radio is sick, kanisa. Facebook is not Facebook church. Sick, kanisa. Twitter is not church Twitter is sick, kanisa. YouTube is not YouTube church sick, kanisa. Instagram is not Instagram church sick, kanisa. all the people came early in the morning to hear him in that temple. Hey, love the temple. Pray for the temple. Believe the temple. Love the temple. Because the temple is incomparable. I wish you the best. This has been my message for the month of October. The importance of the house of God. I love you. I'm praying for you. Wherever you are watching from, wherever you are listening from, go back to church. Go back to church. Go back to church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we are going to give. We are giving online. 0708 086 0708 MTN Money. MTN. Please send your offering. Where is it? Where is Send your time. Where is it? Where is it? Send your love offering and support the work of God and bless that temple. Father bless every giver. Prosper your children. Increase them. Empower them. Make them victorious and successful and prosperous in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.